Welcome to another episode. This is Woodworking 101. Today we are looking at carpentry in depth, how the carpentry and all the woodworking is going to be for the Seawind 1370 Ruby Rose 2. This is midway through a production where they start with raw lumber and then end up with cabinetry like this. Now this may not be your jam. It is pretty in-depth and intricate parts of boat building, but if you want to know how they put together the cabinetry, how they save weight, and how they get a long-lasting product, keep watching. So Mary Young's done all the interior design with her team, and she's got all the joinery aspects. So all the renders are done by Mary Young. Right? Yep. So the stuff that we're working through, the process is Mary Young's doing all the design content in line with the renders, that's where all this is coming from, and then she's going through with her team to then develop actually the joinery aspects which she then gives to our fit out team so when we look at some of the content that we've got on the floor down there at the moment it's the outcome of Miriam's design work cool. here so this is a file that we you know we want to sort of share with people that we can see what we've got so how many different components have you got there Miriam, in the design yeah. down there line th line 40 something so for, and that's just for woodworking the timber work yeah that's pretty cool yeah nice so you've designed all the woodwork to to with the, team. with the team and then that goes to the carpenters and they mock up bits of it because we've seen that. When we go from concept to so something that looks great to then we then have to then back that up with actually okay how do we make this yeah, yeah. stuff that's you know put out there and looks beautiful and that's what Miriam has been working through with her team recently just getting it so it's something that we can construct and then in conjunction with our with our fit out team we've got years of actual sort of the practical building experience as well so you then go through another phase of saying okay well yeah it looks like that but can we make it like this instead and just some, some minor adjustments to make it uh, you know something we can do as a production Cool. Uh, yeah. Perfect. Yep. In terms of the weight study for the whole boat, as the lead design for the 3070, she's got a file that she's running continuously looking at all the weights and all aspects of the boat. Step one from you saying, or the design team saying, we need a, arbitrarily a cabinet here, mm -hmm. Miriam designs it, and then we'll take it to stage two. Exactly right. Thank yeah. you. Mary. So we're going to see the, the, right. the reality. Okay. Yep. Let's move on. Okay, so this is our TNC bay here. This green uh, material is the uh, water resistant uh, MDF type material that we use a lot for our plug and mold making stuff so we'll be machining components up that we'll send down and this is a component this is a sort of small molding which we'll then put filler over and gloss up and turn into a plug and then we'll then make a mold off that um, it's like mdf basically yeah. a fiberboard yeah exactly right so the design team do the design work yep then he'll run the machine here he'll tidy it up and then it'll go off to the plug and mold makers cool. but the relevance for our discussion about joiner is that we actually do a lot of the timber work for our boats will also be done on the same cnc bed so all the sort of flat panel work if we can get that cnc cut first and then they'll then give it to the fit out team to then do the fit out and the joinery work and this is the three axis machine correct three, okay. three axis machine yep. so we outsource the um, hull and the deck mold, but all other components have been done in-house. Yep. We've got 160 something molds that we've designed, of which we've made 140 something at the moment. So we've still got some of the smaller molds that we're making, hatch covers and things like that. So this but is important. All this stuff's being yeah. cut on this bed. Yeah. So importantly, because we get this asked a lot, they're like, "Oh, where's all the other stuff to go into the boat?" And as you have said, and as Shane has said. You spent two years making all these bits. Yeah, yeah. So it literally goes, as we talked to James about in the previous episode, once the hull's complete and they then go to the fit out for electrics and plumbing, we are then moving into installing all these hundreds of components that have already been made. So it's all yeah. done. Yeah, so a lot of the molds have been made for quite some time and yep. they've got the first parts out and the second part just sitting there waiting. So we get the first part to fit onto the deck, for yep. example, like deck hatches. We've got those made, we haven't got the deck demolded yet, so yep. they're just sat there waiting. Once we get the deck demolded, we can then put the deck hatch on, check that it fits, and then if it's good, then we'll make a series of parts. Yeah. So, and there's a lot of components that are like that now. Three, just a point. See the grey on the 880? That's the grey that they're going to use on the 1370. I mean, that hasn't been polished, but on that other one there? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. When we did the 880, we knew we wanted to have a two-tone deck. We started off with a bit more of a sort of gunmetal grey, but we found it was too hot. We did a number of samples where we were just turning, turning it all up to lighter. We just found that was the right mix of nice aesthetics, but not too hot underfoot. No, so that'll be good. the same on the 1370 deck. Looks great, looks great. All right, you're gonna probably struggle with sound here. 
woodworking shop. You can hear everything just winding down. This is like super busy. And the guys have just stopped work for a few minutes to allow us to film because there is a lot of noise in here. So we're going to make this as expedient as possible. Mike, talk us through all this. Yeah, OK, so we've got, we've got a couple of different woodworking areas in our factory. This is the main wood shop. And for us, I mean, we're bringing in raw timber in rough cut form there. The guys here, are, they're, they're taking that timber and they're planing it through. So we're using a few different types of uh, timber, whether it's sycamore or ash, poplar, a few different uh, aspects. Yeah, so this is the ash. We'll be using this on the 1370. And then we've got uh, some sycamore over there as well. So we different different types of timbers that we use. So the guys here, as I say, we, they're just planing it down. So then we've got workable timber here. So if you, on the, uh, on the rack here, we've got all the different types of components we've got. We use a very small amount of teak, but that's becoming very hard to source these days, so we're moving away from that. But we use a, a combination of, uh, of hardwoods and, and softwoods, typically from overseas. All right, so rough lumber, basic shaping, or formed into pieces that they want. What next? So, so in this area here is where we're doing some of our assembly work for the joinery. So we'll take the raw timber and then we're putting it into, making it into cabinets like this, for example. So this is actually a 1260 cabinet, and you can see this is actually the sycamore material that we use to sand on the 1260. So this is a, a part of the veneer. And you can see the grain on sycamores actually is quite interesting. I, I quite like it. For some people, it's a bit too busy, but it just has that sort of, it's almost like a, a shimmer that you can see inside oh, the grain. We've got a mirror with that. Yeah, so it's, lovely, isn't it? it's quite beautiful, yeah. And it just, it just has that sort of subtle authenticity of actually being a real timber, yeah. which I personally like. A hardwood face there, which just goes on the front face, but inside, that's actually hollow. We, we are weight conscious on, on all of our boats. Depending on which boat, uh, will dictate quite what material we use. On some boats, we use like a honeycomb uh, material to really save the weight. Some boats will actually just use a a hollow panel. It's actually more weight beneficial to use a hardwood surround with a couple of thin skins yep. rather than using a honeycomb panel all the way through. It might actually be more advantageous. So it depends which application as to what method we use. What else? Do you make your own veneer or do you buy it in? No, we buy the veneer in, yep. we stitch the veneers together. Okay. So yeah, so you've got hardwood Space. sycamore, yep. you've got sycamore veneers, yep. and then you've got plywoods which we then use and put the veneers onto so we will bond those on so that's actually no, it's just, no it's actually i think it was an off cut but uh but you get the idea this once glued on then goes onto a, a, a six mil board and then you've got that's a fairly standard panel so we do the assembly in this area as well so then quite often with them we're just doing some of the tidying up and finishing work so if we look at this this is again we're on a 1260 component here so this is using some of the hardwood that they the guys would have planed cut down to size and they've done the assembly work here. This is actually solid sycamore and you can see it's all been sanded here. If you're stood in the 1260, just doing the final prep work that they're doing here, sanding it up and then it'll go through to the finishing bay. What have we got here? So just going over to the other side here, this is an 1160 door. But this door's actually got a hard surround and then inside the center part, we've just got a, a foam. So you've got a, a hardwood border and then you've got a foam spacer essentially which is nice and lightweight so it keeps the door nice and lightweight. Now we use just different components. We do use different uh, materials so you can see here this is some of our honeycomb material which we'll see more out when we're on the floor. Then yeah we've got a whole series of doors here which we can see. I love stuff I like Irish. I really love stuff like this. Pick a door, any door. Yeah. Standard door so again we've got a hardwood perimeter and then a, a foam filled door with a band across the center of, of hardwood where we can put the door hardware. Okay, so next stage of the woodworking, Mike, what have we got? Okay, so we're, we're into the second woodwork uh, section here and we just got the next phase of doing the timber work. But Kevin Landry here as well. I've worked with Kev for 16 years now, I think. Kevin is the manager for our timber shop, our upholstery shop and our spray booth. We started working together on the 1160 in Australia. So 1160, 1250, 1260, 1600. If you've got one of those, Kev's probably put his hands on it, doing all the joinery work, timber work, that sort of stuff. When we were just looking at some of that design work that we were looking at with Mirong earlier, we go from beautiful picture to refining it to something that's actually pretty decent as a decent render. Yep. And then we're coming to a set of construction plans that get thrown to Kev. And then Kev's then working through it and saying, okay, well, how are we actually gonna build it? Ah, so you're the master carpenter that everyone you know. He is indeed, <laughs> yes. We've got a sample here. Just talk through what we got here, perhaps. So what we've done is to keep the weight down and to go from a honeycomb, which is a lot of work, we'll be getting rings, CNC cut, 
and inserting the foam with one and a half mil ply on each side. That'll be our door. This is your typical um, 1370 cabinet so door. You, you can feel the potential weight difference between plywood. Oh, oh yeah. So that's a solid ply. So that's, that just doesn't have the veneer on, but that's a solid plywood door. That's a... Kilo, 1500 grams? Maybe, yeah. Yeah. What are you less than a kilo? Five to six. Five to six, yeah. Yeah. Identical. Yeah. One's got the veneer and the other one doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty really light. I'll be Nick for a while. The <laughs> anyway, this, I mean, this is obviously significantly lightweight. It's not that we make solid plywood doors anyway, that we'd never put that on one of our boats, but that was just a sample we're doing. But the, the weight difference is significant, and this is a, a method that we can do nice, repeatable work. So we're using the CNC machine that we uh, we had out in the other in the centre. This is a um, PTE foam. PET. PET. Sorry, PET foam. That we also can CNC cut, and then that's the basis of our door. So Kev, on this, you then what do you do on the inside surface? On top of this, we'll get a, a 1.5 mil plywood with veneer on it. And so, that'll be vacuumed. We got two vacuum tables. Yeah, so, so, so we've got vacuum materials here. So this if you want to come over. This is a good example of what we do with the vacuum right now. So this is a, this is like a, uh, this is a latex or a, or a silicone. silicone bag. So basically anything that we want to vacuum, we can, we put it on this table, you know, very versatile uh, cover that we can put down with a, you've got the press and the seal around the perimeter. So we actually do a lot of vacuum work for when we're doing slightly curved pieces of timber or putting veneers onto items that are curved or flat actually. And just to make sure you get that good consistent pressure down when you're doing the adhesion. Yeah. yeah, I mean, just interesting while we're here, I know it's not the timber shop, but this is where we do our wiring looms. The guys will set up and do their running all their, their looms. So this is a 1260, I believe. But basically they're just running all the looms and you get the different options. So you've got a starboard cabin 12 volt outlet or a starboard toilet or a whatever it is. So they'll run the looms, they can mark it, so they've got consistency. Kev, what we got here, mate? Uh, this is the part of the galley for the 1600. Yep. And it's built out of a combination of uh, honeycomb, four mil plywood, to keep the weight down. And you're changing the door catches for the 1370, That's, right? So you're getting those uh, yeah, they're, lovely they're, milled ones. They're quite a bit different. Yeah, yeah no, I was showing so yeah. They're pretty beautiful, nice. And this is an example of that kind of like curved veneer that you've got on the vacuum table. This particular veneer is engineered ash. It's a wood veneer, yep. but it's laminated and then sliced into veneer for the uniformity of, of it. I just point something out. Are these, these are your QC marks, right? Yes, yes. Interesting, we saw another brand of boat that had been delivered and it had scuffs and dings all over it. And I'm like, I actually said to the owner, like, what's that bloody great ding? And they're like, they, they won't do anything about it. No. The fact that the only we, reason I would have picked up on that is because you've actually got a chalk line around it. Yeah. But yeah, that's. Important. We'll start that. We'll start that right from the beginning of uh, either delivery of a product or yep. a completion, even during a project. I have two people that will actually follow this, follow this piece right through production until the boat leaves, and. Uh, you know, we'll always be picking up little marks and everything like that. I'm yeah. not a, I'm not actually sure what that is. But it's just a tiny, tiny little thing yeah, that I probably wouldn't yeah. have picked up on. Okay, Something that's... like that, we would probably sweat that out. Okay, what have we got next? Yeah. Ooh. That's, uh, that's what we were seeing on the vacuum table before. So obviously we've got that engineered veneer right over the top onto a hardwood post there. So yeah, and we have the same, so this is you can imagine you're in the going through into the aft cabin in the 1600. This is the ring frame that goes in front of the cabin there. So we we dress that with a soft furnishing. But again, it's got the veneer all put down on the vacuum table. We're just uh, further down the process and they're just doing some uh, prep work before it goes into the spray booth. So again, we're talking 1600 gear here, and we're just grain filling. So all of the veneers, whether it's natural or, or engineered, have all got lots of peaks and undulations. So you want to get that filled so when you when you spray it, you've got a nice finish. So that's just a filling process. Then we get, obviously, it all gets sanded up. And then we go through into the spray booth here. So quite a quite an operation. I think we're spraying at the moment, but uh, let's have a look. No, we're OK. And then just uh, all the preparation work. So this is 1160 stuff. You can see sort of that grey tone yep. content. So. All this is still imported timbers that we use, but we just take them through, sand them up, and then they're sealed and, uh, and sprayed in a, in a grey. And then once they're done, we then get um, all the kits 
for different boats. So if you just come this way a little bit, you can just see we've got a series of doors, lockers, and then over on the far side wall, we've got a whole series of other kits done for 1160, 1260, 1600. So just to confirm, this is all acrylic. It's none of it's, because it's not acrylic, it's a plastic. It's, it's a plastic, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's water resistant, but, you know, you can get uh, sort of like those cardboard uh, honeycombs, exactly. which yeah. uh, obviously on a boat can be uh, prone to sort of swelling and moisture. Um, so we use this a lot on the 1600, 1370 we'll be using the honeycomb on certain panels, not all panels, yep. but as you can see, it's, you know, you've got the same sort of setup where you're going to have a, a veneer, a plywood, the honeycomb, plywood, and then depending on what is on the back side, it might just be the plywood veneer or it might be a double sided where it's got the veneer on the back as well. Below. Yeah, I mean, it's a sort of random size. Basically, if we've got big panels, then we can, uh, we'll use this. But then on the smaller components where we're talking about doors, we'll go to the PET foam yep. border arrangement. So, cool. yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. So, did you enjoy that? I hope you did. It's pretty in depth. But for me, seeing raw lumber being turned into furniture gives me a lot of confidence in the way that our boat is going to look, feel, and how safe and kind of hardy she's going to be. So, if you enjoyed that, give us a like, give us a thumbs up. Click the notification bell because YouTube stopped turning them off all the time. And subscribe to the channel and we'll be back real soon to show you more of our incredible boat build. Goodbye.